All right, so this morning I was reading through some of the comments and some of my videos, and I got asked this simple question yet one more time, and I do get asked this a lot. So I thought I would share with you my opinions on working with a control surface and whether or not it may be right for you or it may not be right for you. And I'm gonna cover my personal experiences as well as quite a few other people I've known over the decades who've had different experiences with it. And so you can use this information to figure out and tr or at least try to figure out if this is something you want to invest your money in if you feel like it will increase your productivity and your workflow. Now for some, control services can be a blessing, really help somebody get very efficient and very productive. In some sense for others, it's a hindrance. It gets in the way. And so the differences between what your experience is going to be uh, will depend on a few factors. Let's talk about why buy a control surface. I think most people get into it. Let's just be honest. Let's really get down to it. It looks freaking cool, okay? And so that's why most people want to start getting one. And then they have this idea about what it's going to do. I'm going to get that feel like I'm working with the real analog console. I get to touch knobs, touch dials, touch faders. It's going to improve my experience so much, and I really want to have that in my studio. And for some people, that's absolutely correct. And for others, it could not be more wrong. So what are those differences? It depends on how you are going to utilize the capabilities of that control surface which control surface you buy for which particular digital audio workstation you prefer. If you're going to buy one, the first thing that you got to figure out is which one is most compatible with your preferred, the number one digital audio workstation you spend most of the time in. For example, I've got Avid Yukon behind me. The SSL UF8 works great with everything but Pro Tools. It works with Pro Tools, but nowhere near the integration that you have with Logic and Cubase and uh, Studio One, as well as others, okay? Where Avid Yukon, as an example, primarily just works with Pro Tools and New Window. And so if you're in one of those, you can take advantage of the capabilities of Yukon and you need to understand what those are compared to the workflow of other typical control surfaces. Let's talk real quick about the control surfaces I've owned and used extensively over several decades. I used to have a 48 channel Pro Control that I used with Pro Tools TDM. And then I moved past that and went into a 24 channel D command of which I used for years with Pro Tools TDM as well as HDX. To date, the D command is by far the best control service I've ever used, hands down. And I think the one I was using was made in 2005. So that should tell you something. They had a really good understanding of really what the users needed all the way back then, and it still hasn't been matched up until today, in my opinion. There have been other features added that it doesn't have, but what it did, in my opinion, still does the very best of any control service ever. In addition to those two, I've used the DigiDesign Command 8. That was also an incredibly great control service for Pro Tools. Now, all of these I've mentioned so far only work with Pro Tools, and predominantly the first two, Pro Tools HD or Pro Tools HDX, whereas the Command 8 will work with the native version. Then beyond that, I've used the Mackie Control with Logic. I use that quite extensively, and I'm going back a lot of years with this. I've used the SSL UF8s, and I'm currently on Avid's Yukon system. So ultimately, you get in the feel that I like control surfaces, and I do. However, there is a but. You know, I recently did a video debating on whether or not I'm going to get rid of my Avid S1 or not. And I've kind of been debating upon it because ultimately what I find is I hardly ever touch it. I hardly ever, ever touch it. I never use the faders on it, almost never, but I do love and utilize the dock. The dock is absolutely wonderful. What you can do with Yukon is off the charts. The customization of it, it is beyond, beyond the greatest workflow that I've found if you work with a digital audio workstation that it is compatible with. As far as modern control surfaces, I think it's absolutely fantastic. That said, it is not without its faults. Yukon can be quirky and you have to accept some of these flaws. There's no perfect one out there. Whereas my experience with the SSL UF8 
was overall great. And I do believe that it is the best overall control surface that you can purchase for every digital audio workstation with the exception of Pro Tools. Um, but I think, and it does work with Pro Tools. It just does, it's not integrated as well because it still has to use the old Mackie control protocol uh, in the in Pro Tools, whereas you can write more customized code to more modern digital audio workstations that are not Pro Tools. So Barry, so far you've talked about all the great things that you like about control surfaces, and you obviously are a fan of them, and you've obviously used them the majority of your, of your time in audio, and I would say that is correct. However, just like that S1, I felt I never touched it, because I do my automation with my mouse. I find it more effective to do it that way. But then again, that's my workflow. It may not be yours. I have probably known far too many people who loved the idea of owning a control surface, bought it, got it into their studio, really loved the way it looked, and never even bothered to really get in and learn every aspect of it. And therefore, it was just a trophy piece sitting there on, uh, on their desk. They found that they used, kept using the mouse, keyboard shortcuts, versus actually using the control surface. I'd almost say that a large percentage, I'm not going to go as far as 50%, but I'm not feeling it's that far off of it, of people who venture into the control surface territory and then really never utilize it properly. And these are some of the differences that you have to consider. Look, if you're fluid, you're efficient, and you get things done with a mouse, the odds are you finding a control surface to be highly effective for you is diminished significantly. Not completely, but I'm doing law of averages here. Obviously, everything I'm saying doesn't apply to everybody in every situation. However, if you're constantly getting frustrated with trying to do multiple things at the same time and you feel like that mouse and those keyboard shortcuts are slowing you down, you more than likely can probably appreciate utilizing a control surface where you can perform multiple actions at the same time, depending on how many hands you've got available, I guess. So at the end of this, what is it I'm really trying to tell you? There's no one size fits all for this. There's no, I'm going to be able to tell you, you're going to love it, you're going to love it, or you're going to hate it, you're going to hate it. That's going to be true for everybody out there. Not likely to be the same opinion, but everyone will experience it differently. And so that is the reality. So ultimately, you're never really ever going to know unless you try one. Now, if you've got access to a friend's, then by all means, go over there, ask that friend, can I spend, can I spend a few hours with him? Maybe he'll let you, he or she, We'll let you borrow it for a weekend where you can take it home and run it through its paces and see if it's something you want to do or not. But otherwise, it's going to be a roll of the dice. And control surfaces in general do not hold their value very well. So keep that in mind. Like any piece of digital equipment, it will age out pretty quickly. That said, time for my shameless little plug here. If you do decide to buy a control surface or anything else, quite frankly, and you appreciate the content that I put out for you and all the work that I do to give you guys lots of things to consider on this channel, I would appreciate it if you utilize that link because I have an affiliation with Sweetwater. And so any, anything that you buy using that link, I will get a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of. And no, you don't make a ton of money off views in YouTube. That's a huge misconception. So ultimately, guys like me have to supplement their income from the channel so that they can keep it going with other ways, and that's one of the ways I do it, okay? So please do me a favor, whether it's today, tomorrow, or a year from now, if you remember, go back to one of my videos, copy that link, and then go purchase whatever you want. There are a few other vendors down there outside of Sweetwater that you can choose to go that route as well. Up to you, but I would certainly appreciate it. Now, if you have any comments, if you had, share with all everybody down below what your experiences have been with a control service, whether you had one and you sold it, or whether you have one and you want to add a second or a third one that you're using them so much, it's really transforming your workflow. Share that with everybody so everybody can use that experience from a varied degree of sources, ultimately, to make the best decision that you can or they can in their studio. So I'd appreciate you taking the time to contribute to that. But until next time, hope every one of you have a great day. Bye-bye.